Good morning, everybody. Oh, it's good to see your faces. Good to be back here in the, the homestead. How many had a good time at the park last week? That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good time. We will. We will do it again. For those of you that don't that don't know, we we had church in the park last week, uh, out of the Trine Rec area, and man, we just had a great time together. Let us stand and let's make our declaration together to open our service. We have gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. We have come to this house to worship God. We have come to confess that Jesus is Lord. We're not here to be entertained. We are here to encounter the sacred. We're not consumers. We are worshipers. We praise and adore the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And mighty God, we just say thank you for your presence in this room right now. Lord, as we worship and sing songs to you, we ask that you would open our hearts, open our eyes, fill our, our senses with a, a, a knowledge of your closeness, of how near you are to us this morning. Lord, we love you so much. We give you all the praise. Amen. Let's worship him together. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Drink of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live for Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell will never defeat it. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loves the world. you this morning, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we give you praise and honor. Hallelujah. Hey, turn to somebody, just give them a high five right now. Just say, God is good. Oh, how we love you, Lord. <laughs> yes, 
our lives on you. Well, everything else is shaken. When everything else is uncertain, we put our hope in you, Jesus. We build our lives on you, Lord. When everything else is broken, when everything else is forsaken, we've built our lives on you, Lord.
stuff ready this morning and practicing. Um, I heard something, I, I, I thought it was just for the worship team, but I, I feel like maybe I should share it with everybody. And I, I felt like the Lord said to me that um, the enemy's working really hard to make us feel unworthy, to make us feel like we don't belong, to make us feel like we're not good for anything make us feel like we should just quit. If you're in this room and you feel that way this morning, I want you to know that that's not God speaking to you. And not only that, it's not true. And the Lord, he has brought you to this place this morning for a purpose. You're not here by accident. He wanted you to know today, right here and right now, that he loves you. He has called you for a purpose. That he has amazing things that he wants to partner with you to do. And don't allow those feelings of despair, of worthlessness, don't let those creep in. Those aren't him. That's a lie from the enemy don't believe it this morning. So Father, I just pray over all of us this morning, myself included, Lord, that you would just drown out the voice of the enemy with your voice, singing love over us, singing a song of deliverance. Lord, that we would be set free, that we would recognize the enemy's voice for what it is, and that we would move forward confident in your acceptance, conf but even more than that, confident that we've been, we have been chosen by you for great and awesome things. Lord, we step into those things by faith right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, I want you to turn to somebody and say, God's really glad that you're on his team. Turn to somebody and say that to him. Uh, yeah, well, good morning, everybody. Hey, it's really good to see you. Hey, if you are a visitor with us, we're super glad you're here. If I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, you know, I, I'm coming your way after service, so. Uh, 
Just hang around so I can shake your hand. Um, man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? You agree? Uh, uh, we, we just... We've been back from vacation for a week, but last week was weird because we were at the park. So this really feels like our homecoming uh, Sunday, and it's good to be home. And I want to say again to everybody that that uh, made, the, made kept the machinery running while we were gone, I want to say again thank you so much to all of you uh, to g- for giving us those couple of day a couple of weeks there to get away and uh, and relax a little. And, uh, you know, connect with the fam. And uh, it was really, really great time. We, we did survive. My son, my sunburn has all peeled off now. So praise the Lord for that. I know you wanted to hear that. I know, I know that image was important. But, uh, <laughs> okay. So we have a couple announcements. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get ready to receive the offering this morning. Um, so if I can get a couple of guys to jump up and usher for us. Thank you, gentlemen. Those are the baskets. Thank you, Ed. You're the man. Ed and Isaiah. Can I get a Dave? You're the thank you, sir. Ian. Gentlemen, I appreciate you. Hallelujah. We did not take an offering last week, so if you still if you have a tithe check from last week, then you can put it in there this week. That'd be good. Can we all just applaud my incredible wife? As, you know. I do not know what I would do without her. I really don't. I would probably move home with my mama. (laughs) That's why my mom prays so often for Rachel's health and safety. Um, (laughs) uh, No, that's so awesome. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Let's pray over this offering. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity right now to, uh, to, to activate our faith, to say in a tangible way that we trust you as our provider, that we recognize that everything that we have comes from you, and hmm, that you are the one taking care of us. So Lord, I pray as we, as we give, we'd be, we'd help us to give with cheerful hearts, Lord, I pray that you would uh, give back to us as you promised, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Let it be poured into our laps, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, guys. You can also give online if that's something you want to do or if you are not present with us in the body. If you're out there on the interwebs, you can go to www.fremontcommunity.org to support our ministry there. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have a couple things to announce. Um, first of all, this Tuesday, yes, this Tuesday, 6.30, right? 6. 6. This Tuesday at 6 o'clock is our monthly ladies inspiration night. So uh, it, is, it is pop-up testimony night. We had somebody scheduled to be here, but then he got, he's, he went to the Olympics. Uh, so... You know, I think we can probably reschedule for that. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but, and so we'll have to catch his testimony another time. Um, but uh, so I, what we're asking you to do is to come prepared just to share something that God has done in your life in the last few weeks, months, years. Who knows? Just pop up testimonies. I'm giving you fair warning, ladies. So you come prepared. Okay? We will not be putting it out on Facebook. So you don't have to worry about the cameras. Okay? We didn't want to freak everybody out. So, um, but, uh, but yeah. So, anyway, that would be a great evening. We also have the work night for the uh, Fremont Youth Community Outreach Food Pantry uh, is also Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Um, and so the, the, that is where we make things ready for the distribution days. Things get packed up. Things get put together. Things get organized. It's really hard to do that. The distribution days, it's not possible to do any organizing on those days. There's too much going on uh, and not not enough hands to do all the work a lot of the time. So um, so we have to have another day. So if you are available between, what, 3 and 6 on Tuesday night, this coming Tuesday afternoon, to help out 
with that, I know Melissa could really use the extra hands. And she's right here, so you can just, you know, talk to her and let her know, hey, I'm going to come and help you out that night, and then she'll find a job for you. Okay, uh, final thing, I, uh, which is coming up in August, the first Friday family fun night for August. Hey, I, we have so much fun at those first Friday family fun nights. You are all invited. Every single person, man, woman, child, you are invited to come to the First Friday Family Fun Nights. It is the Fremont Community Church family that we're talking about. So even if you're a single adult, please come and have some fun with us. We play games and things, but this one, because it is the coming, you know, we're headed to the end of summer, believe it or not. Man, you know, they, uh, they're starting school here in Fremont on August 11th, which is my birthday. It's the best birthday present they could possibly give me. <laughs> I'm only kidding, everybody, a little bit, kind of, sort of. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. But August 6th is the first Friday in, uh, in August, and we are going to be outside. We're going to do like a hot dog, uh, hot, uh, hot dog roast and lawn games, that kind of thing. Outside, August 6th, it is from 6 to 8 p.m. It will be fun. Remember the last time we did that last year, whenever it was? It was a blast, wasn't it? It was really fun. So come and join us. It'll be a great time. I think that's it. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, kids, we love you. You're good to go. All the way up through, through fifth grade. Through fifth grade, you are released to go to your classes. So have a great time. Go learn stuff about Jesus. I want to say a huge thank you to all of those folks who work so hard to make those classes happen. Mm. Let's pray and then we'll... Open up God's word today. Hmm. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in this room. Holy Spirit, I just, I ask that you would move. I ask that you would stir our hearts, that you would awaken us that we would hear you speak, we'd recognize your voice. Church, I just feel like we should take a few seconds and just wait on the presence of the Lord. This isn't a time for uh, prophetic words or anything like that. I just want to spend a moment in silence. I want to encourage you, uh, if, that's, if that's the only silence you've had for a while, um, silence is something that we need to learn how to do. Especially, we live in the noisiest culture in human history. You know that there are birds in urban areas that have begun to mimic the sounds of the traffic signals and the cars and the things. 
because that's the sound of their environment. And we literally have noise going on 24 hours a day in most of our worlds, not to mention, I read a statistic the other day which blew my mind. 60% of people go to sleep with the television on. Wow. Is that true in this room? How many of you go to sleep with the TV on? Now, I don't mean like you're watching TV and you fall asleep, but you actually have it on at night. Wow, that just, I don't think I could do that personally. I think that would really make it nearly impossible for me to fall asleep. Um, but, uh, but we have a need for noise, it appears. Uh, or maybe it's that we're afraid of silence. And I want to encourage you to make silence a daily practice. Even if it's just five minutes, just after the kids are in bed or before they get up in the morning, that's usually the best time, even though I am not a friend of mornings. Morning and mornings and I are not good buddies, okay? Uh, uh, but um, that is the easiest time at my house to actually get a moment of silence is in the morning before the rest of the house is awake. Um, Although my son Aiden gets up before all of us because he goes out and works out at 6 a.m. So we're praying for him. There's something wrong with his brain. Um, no, he's an athlete, and it's important. But anyway, so once he's gone, then I get some silence in the house. Uh, I'm never up that early, my goodness. But that's for free. That was just extra. This morning, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 9. Uh, I've been hearing this message for a couple, three or four months, honestly. Um, hearing the, the Holy Spirit say this to us, uh, to me specifically, but also I feel like he's saying this to us as a body. Um, and uh, I just want to bring this word. I, I, um, I, I believe that this space... This Sunday morning space, you know, after worship where for some reason you guys hand me a microphone and let me yak at you for a while. Um, uh, I believe that this space is mostly that there's teaching that happens in this in this time and in this space. And, and if I ever come to you and I'm not and I am not speaking to you from the word of God, I want you to confront me, please, uh, because. Uh, I, the Word of God is the authority here, not not Josh Hawkins. Um, uh, so I, I'm here. I am. If 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 I'm ever not preaching from God's Word, slap me upside the head, uh, please. I'm giving you permission. I know you will, Frank. I know. <coughs> Everybody except Frank has that permission. Um, but I also believe that this time is. A prophetic moment. I believe that this time is for not just study, although we will always be studying. Uh, and Wednesday, our Wednesday night Bible studies is our real time for study, where we spend an entire hour going verse by verse through the Scripture. It's seven thirty every Wednesday night, right here or on Facebook Live, uh, where we will dig deep into the Word of God. Um, right now, we just started the book of Romans uh, this last week, and I am, I am guessing we're going to be in that book for a while. First of all, the R Romans is one of the longest books in the New Testament, but second, it's also one of the most dense and important books in the New Testament. And you know me, we are not going to, we're not going to browse. We are going to go after every single thing that's in there. That's what Wednesday nights are for. But Sunday mornings, I always ask the Lord, what are you saying to your church this week? And he's going to take me to Scripture, and we're going to hear what he has to say from the Scriptures. But that's always my question, is what are you saying to us in this time, in this moment, Jesus? Because I don't trust my own words, but I trust his and I don't trust my own ideas, but I trust his. And I want to give you what I sense the Holy Spirit is saying. And I pray for a long time. Like I said, this word has been brewing in my spirit for at least two or three months. Um, 
and I have been praying over it, and I really sense that this is what the Lord is saying to us this morning. Uh, but I, I wanted you to know my thinking there. These Sunday morning times, this is a time where I'm going to seek the face of God and ask Him what He wants to say to you, and I'm going to do my best through an through ex, uh, uh, but my brain just switched off the word that <laughs> expository preaching. That's what I meant to say. Okay, where we open up God's Word and I bring that to you. I'm going to ask the Lord what He's saying. I'm going to ask him to direct me to a verse in the Bible where he's saying it, because if it's not in the Bible, then he's not saying it. Are you with me? Okay. Um, and, and then I'm going to preach that verse. That's what I'm going to do. Does that make sense? just wanted you to give you a little insight on how my brain works and how I think about our patterns as a church. We have the Wednesday night, 6.30 to 7.30 is just an open prayer time. I am often the only one here during that time. I don't care. Jesus is in this place. So you are welcome to come and join us. I just put music on, and I will pace the floor and sometimes yell and scream and shout. You're welcome to be here with me. It's okay. I'm spending time with Jesus. I'd love for you to be alongside me when I do that. But then at 730, we open up God's word, and we go deep, nugget by nugget, verse by verse, sometimes word by word into the scripture and I love it and it's so much fun and I really want to encourage you to join me either in person or online Uh, but this morning the word that I heard the Lord give to me a few months ago was from Matthew chapter 9 and we're going to read verse starting at verse 35 Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom And he healed every kind of disease and illness. Isn't it great that we have a king who can heal every kind of disease and illness? I think that's amazing. Do you think Jesus is different today than he was 2,000 years ago? It's the same Jesus. He can still heal every kind of disease and illness. I still believe that. And there's times when God does not heal, and of course that happens. Uh, and and, and we got to trust him that he knows better than we do in those situations. But it, it does not mean I'm not going to ask him to do it. Does that make sense? All right. That was just a side point. But that's what Jesus is doing. In verse 36, it says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused. And helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his field. Jesus is out there doing the stuff, man. He is healing the sick. He is casting out demons. He is teaching God's word. He is proclaiming the good news that God has become king. And that the kingdom of Satan is at an end. That's good news, right? That's what he's doing. He's out there and everywhere he goes, there's people that are Hungry for the message and hungry for the power of God to heal and hungry. But everywhere he looks, he sees crowds and crowds and more crowds and more crowds. And these crowds are getting very large at this point in time. I mean, this is right around the time when Jesus feeds the 5,000. And, and, you know, I mean, these are huge crowds. And his heart is moved with compassion because of the great number of people, and they are confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And he turns to his best buddies, the guys that are in it with him, the guys that are already helping him do the work. And he says, boys, this job is a big job. We need help. Our little troop of guys. There's 12 apostles, disciples, and Jesus. And there were some others that kind of hung around and helped Jesus out too. 
How are we going to minister to all these people who so desperately need a touch from God, who so desperately need to be invited into the kingdom, who so desperately need to be set free from the kingdom of sin and death and brought in to the kingdom of life and, and, and hope and peace and joy, who so desperately need to experience the forgiveness of their sins and to be given wisdom to lead an entirely different kind of life. Oh, guys, this job is big. What are we going to do? And Jesus did what Jesus always did when he was faced with insurmountable problems. So here's the thing. Jesus was always toe-to-toe with things that were impossible. Have you ever noticed this about Jesus? And Jesus was never intimidated because Jesus had the right answer. When Jesus was standing at the grave of Lazarus, he was standing toe-to-toe with an impossible thing. There's a dead guy in there. He's been dead for three days, and he should not be dead. He needs to be raised from the dead. So Jesus lets us know by praying to the Father out loud, Father, thanks for hearing me. I know you always hear me, but I wanted these people to know that you heard me. And then he says, Lazarus, get out of there. What are you doing in there? And out comes Lazarus. Because Jesus understood. When Jesus got face to face with a problem, he didn't look at the size of his problem. He looked at the size of his God, and he made a quick estimation that God's got this. Are you with me? Sometimes I think that we think of Jesus as just kind of floating along in this ethereal cloud of glory, that nothing affected him, that he was just, you know, he was so, he was holy, completely holy, and he was fully God, and, but he was also fully man. And if you think that a, a guy in a grave for three days was not kind of a gulper for Jesus, you know what I'm talking about? You ever been up against something and gone, oop? Right? I don't know. My son Aiden has started doing that. It's just kind of his thing. Whenever he feels intimidated, he gulps as loud, loud enough to, for all of us to hear. I think Jesus was like, okay, here we go. God, Father, this, this is not easy. This is not easy. But then one look at the Father and all the Father's power, and it was like, oh, wait a minute, for you this is easy. Never mind. Lazarus, get out of there. We need to be in the same mood. Me especially, I got to tell you, you know, I get up against some, I get up against issues, and and I get blinded sometimes by the size of the giant and not by the size of my God. Are you with me? Jesus wasn't that way. And Jesus knew the answer to the problem. Jesus is looking. His heart is moved with compassion. These people need to hear the good news. All these people feel they're just confused and helpless. They're like sheep without a shepherd. And I'm just one guy standing here and I got my 12 friends, but we're just 13 guys. What a, this is a huge job. And then he said, oh, yeah. Guys, I want you to pray with me that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into the harvest field because Jesus remembered something. This was God's harvest. This was God's mission. This was God's problem. Oh, wait a minute, Father, this is your problem, not mine. Wait a minute, Father, this is something you want to do. I'm not just out here by myself. Father, this is something you want to do. So, Father, here we are. We need help. We need laborers to send into the harvest field. Do you know what happens next? Jesus sends out the 72. Okay? Immediately, God begins to, well, the next thing that happens is he appoints 12 disciples. So, I mean, they, they were already there doing the thing. But Jesus gives them authority. And he sends them out. And then he sends out the 72. So that's even even more people that God apparently heard his prayer and sent him workers to send out into the harvest field. 
Is that pretty cool, right? Well, apparently none of you are excited about that, but I am. I think that's amazing because what we see once again is Jesus asking the Father for something and the Father answering. And Jesus sends these people out so that he has multiplied himself. Oh, here we go. Now, you all, I'm giving you all power to go out there and heal the sick and cast out demons and preach the good news. Go. And they went into the whole region there, all of Jesus' guys, the 12 apostles, but then also 72 others that Jesus sent out into the region. And when they all came back, they were all totally psyched. You want to know why? Because they were doing the stuff that Jesus had been doing. They were like, Jesus, check this out. We were healing sick people. I'm sorry, but I would be excited about that myself. You know, I, I have seen God heal sick people while I prayed for them really dramatically many times. That's actually true. I have watched people be healed. But I will never forget the most dramatic healing I've ever seen in my entire life. I was in Chapala, Mexico. I was in a church called the Church of the Holy Spirit. And we, I had been, I was preaching that Sunday morning. And, uh, and I felt like the Lord had told me to give an altar call for the healing of sick. Um, other things too, but he wanted to heal the sick. And he had told me that that morning. And so I said, okay, Lord, um, let's do that. And so I said, you know, if you're sick, I want you to come on up. You know, and the place just, like the whole church came forward. Right? And I'm like, ooh, okay, well, let's do this. And the other people who were on the, the team with me, I think, Michelle, were you there that time? The whole team that was, that was, on the, that was with us there, they were all praying for people, and, and the Holy Spirit's moving, everybody's crying. You know, it was great. It was perfect. And, you, you know, you got to have an interpreter there, because I don't speak a lick of Spanish. I've been to Mexico like eight times, but I don't speak any Spanish, or very, very little and, and, and so I have to have an interpreter there. Okay, what do they need prayer for, right? And I'm praying for people. And I'm sensing the power of the Holy Spirit. But then all of a sudden, it was like something just grabbed me, like, and just pulled me. I mean, I literally felt physically pulled to my left. And I walk over, and there's this woman standing there, just, just vibrating like that, right? And, I, and, and, and before I even got there, I... I felt the Holy Spirit just go boom and just hit her like a like lightning bolt. Before I went, I didn't, even, I didn't put my hand on her, nothing. And, I, and, and she's standing there, she does, ooh, weeping, just vibrating. And, and I said, I said, uh, I said, please tell her she's already healed. Just tell her she's already healed. That, that she came here with faith today, and the, and the Lord is, he has healed her already because of her faith. And the, the, the interpreter tells that. And she's just like, ah, and then she fell on the floor, and then I just, you know, kept going. Well, we came back to that same church a week, uh, uh, the, the next Wednesday. It was, that was a Sunday. We came back on Wednesday night. And Wednesday night was Bible study night, but then also in, uh, it was um, testimony night. And, uh, and I recognized that lady, and she came in, and we get to testimony time, and she's just like, boom, she shoots up. It's not like around here when I'm like, anybody have a testimony? And everybody's trying not to meet my eyes. No, she was excited. And she stands up and she starts talking. And they said to us, she had rheumatoid arthritis. It was so bad that she hadn't been to church in a year because she couldn't move. Her medicine was hundreds and hundreds of dollars every month. And it didn't do hardly anything to, to, for the pain. And... The Lord woke her up on that Sunday morning and said, I want you to go to church because I'm going to heal you today. And she told him, I can't, I can't do it. But she got some help and she got to church. And when I said, Jesus wants to heal people, she said, I know he does. And she came forward and God healed her. And from that day, from that Sunday until that Wednesday, she had taken zero medicine and had zero pain the entire time. Was that crazy? Wow, that's crazy. That is amazing, and I can't tell you, I felt like, woo, because I was, I like, I got to be a part of that, and I didn't even put my hand on her, you know, it was just, 
It was all Jesus. I didn't have nothing to do with it except I was there just to tell her, hey, you're healed. She's like, duh, right? <laughs> That's all I had to do with it. But it was awesome, and that was so cool and so much fun. And I've seen other times, you know, there's been other times when I'll pray for people, they'll be like, hey, I actually feel better. Well, as if that's a surprise. Yeah, you know, God does heal people. Anyway, so I know what it's like. I know what they must have felt like when they came rushing back. Hey, Jesus, we healed people. Not only that, we cast demons out of people. Now, I've been a part of that a couple times, too, and that is freaky. It is not fun, except it is a little bit fun, but it's only afterwards. Afterwards, you're like, wow, that was cool. At the time, you're just scared out of your brains. You're just like, oh, this is what's wild. Okay, anyway, they're like, even the demons are leaving people in your name, Jesus. And that's so exciting. And Jesus is like, all right, calm down. What you should really be excited about is that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, so relax. But they were so filled with purpose, so filled with excitement, because they had partnered with God to do the impossible. They had partnered with God to see the kingdom break out on the face of the earth. They had partnered with God, and God had done something awesome. But where did it begin? It began with Jesus saying, guys, pray that God will send laborers into the harvest field. The harvest is ripe, and the workers are few. Guys, pay attention. God wants to do something, and nobody's here to help him do it. Now, I've always thought it was crazy that God wanted human help. I mean, you're perfect, God. Why don't you just do it by yourself? But here's the deal. Go read your Bible. God doesn't, the, only, the last thing God did by himself was create the world. Ever since then, ever since the creation of mankind, he's always wanted to have a human buddy. Now, it's like this lady. I mean, I was not involved in that. More than just saying, hey, Jesus wants to heal people. She came forward. I said, hey, you're healed. She said, I know. That was it. I didn't really do anything except I got to watch. I, I, got to, I was obedient, and I got to watch. And that was cool. I'm excited about that. God did all the work. I just got to be a part of it. But if I hadn't said yes, if I hadn't stepped out, if I hadn't said, yeah, let's go to Mexico, yeah, I'll step out. I think that was our first trip we ever did, wasn't it, that trip? If I hadn't said yes, okay, Lord, I'll raise the money. I'll take some crazy teenagers down to Mexico. And there were a couple crazy adults, too, with us on that trip. One of them sitting right there. Um, uh, but it started by praying and saying, God, send laborers into the harvest field. God, there's, there's a great harvest. And you're calling me to go to Mexico this time, and I will go. There's a great harvest in Mexico. But I want to say this to you. Lift up your eyes. Because all around us is a great harvest field. You're sitting in the middle of a, a, great, a great harvest field right now. It's all around us. I, I did some research this week. There's roughly 35,000 people in Steuben County. Somewhere around 3,000 in Fremont, a little more. Uh, anywhere from eight to 900 of those are kids under the age of 15. There's 9,000 people in Angola-ish. 3,000 of those are kids. And I couldn't find real good numbers on this. But in 2019, the Pew Research Center said that roughly 37% of this county attends church more than once a month. Once a month or more, I should say. 37% of people actually go to church 12 times a year or more. little more research. Turns out we don't have room 
We don't have room in all of the churches in this region. If, if we put as many people as can fit in all the churches of this region, we would still not have room for about half of the people in this county. And there's a lot of churches in this county. A lot. Somewhere around 100 churches in Stavane County. And even if all of them were completely full to capacity, we, we'd still have half the people would be standing outside. Look around. The harvest is plentiful. There's a lot of churches in this region that are awesome churches. There's an event going on tonight at Life Changing Church from 6 to 8 p.m. It just looks like it's going to be a fun time. Mini golf, ice cream. It's a free event. That's amazing. We just had a really successful day of play. Where are you at, Deshana? Deshana and Melissa worked together to make the day of play and many others of you. Thank you so much for everybody that was involved in that day. But how many families did we have come through? We had 70 people come through that day just to hang out and play and, you know, see a smiling face connected to this church. And people saying, hey, we love you. We're really glad you're here. That's awesome, and I love that. I want to do that more, a lot more. You want to know why? Because we're sitting in the middle of a harvest field that's ripe for harvest. I would name the other statistics that I looked up, but they're so depressing <laughs> that I don't want to even bring them out. But I'll tell you this, suicide is on the rise. Substance abuse of all kinds is on the rise. I mean, through the roof on the rise. Heroin in particular has like quadrupled in this county in the last three or four years. Look around. They're confused and hurting like sheep without a shepherd. Look around. Look around, friends. There is a great harvest all around us right now. And we're doing some things but we need to do so much more. And I'm going to be honest with you. The reason we're not doing more than we're doing now is the same problem Jesus had. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Now, there are so many of you in this room who are such faithful, hard workers. This is not a guilt message. I'm not here to be like, if you guys would just... No, we're not, I'm not here to do that at all. I am so grateful for the heart of the people in this church. I look around and I see so many of you who have worked so hard for so long doing so many different things because you have looked and you have seen that the harvest is great. And I applaud you and I say thank you. Come on, let's just give Jesus applause for everything that goes on in this place. <laughs> Jesus has done great things here in this church and I believe he will do great things here in this church, but I also feel pressed, pushed by the Holy Spirit these last few months by this urgent, urgent command of Jesus, pray for laborers to enter the harvest field. I, Jesus is so, here's the deal, folks. Jesus wants Steuben County. I don't know if you know this or not, but Jesus knows the name of every single one of those eight or nine hundred children. He knows exactly how many there are. Jesus knows their face. He knows how many hairs are on their head. Jesus knows them intimately and he loves them and he wants them to be drawn into a relationship with himself. That is his desire. That is what he wants. He wants to see their lives set on a path towards beautiful, awesome, thriving lives full of joy and happiness and wisdom in the service of his name and in relationship with him. He wants that for every single person in this county. That is the burning of his heart. And he is calling out to us this morning, look and see. 
the harvest is ready. It's ripe. And yeah, you're going to have stuff to do. And that is one of the things that we need to be asking him. Okay, Lord, the harvest is ripe. What is my responsibility? In what way, Jesus, do you want me to partner with you to bring in the harvest? That's question number one. Okay, Lord, how can I be involved? Where do you want me to plug in? I'll tell you right now, we really need folks in the kids' ministry in this church. We really do. We really need a couple, of, a couple more people on the worship team. We really need pastoral care folks who are willing to pray and to go out and take care of people when they're, you know, in the hospital or when they're at home. And I'm trying to get as many as I can, but again, I'm just one guy. We need you to be working here. And I want, and I'm going to, I'm challenging you this morning. I want you to ask the Lord in a brand new way, Lord, what would you have me do? But more than that, my friends, more than that, much more than that, I am asking you, I am begging you, I am imploring you, please pray that Jesus, the Lord of the harvest, will send workers into this harvest field. I'm specifically asking the Lord, it is, I believe that God wants to birth a region impacting children's ministry in this church. And right now we have wonderful people who are working with the kids every Sunday, and I'm so grateful for them. They're amazing. But I believe that God wants to birth a region impacting children's ministry in this church, a children's ministry that looks at 800 kids and says, yeah, that's about right. That's how many we want. Jesus, we're asking for all of them. I believe that with all my heart. I really do. I believe that God wants to birth a region impacting youth ministry in this church. It's okay to clap about that. I believe that with all my heart. I really do. But we're going to need laborers in this harvest field. So here's what I want you to join me in prayer. I've been praying this prayer for the last three months, two or three months. I'm not sure how long, but at least two months. I've been saying, Lord, send us men and women who have your heart for the children of this region. Send us men and women who have your heart for the youth of this region. Send us men and women who have your heart to pastor and care for and grow the adults of this region. I'm asking Jesus, I'm praying this prayer that he commanded his disciples to pray. I'm one of his disciples. Are you? I, I am praying this prayer. Jesus, send laborers into the harvest field. Send laborers into the harvest field. I am here. I'll do whatever you want me to do, Jesus. I am in 100%. So you need to start there. I mean, if you're not in 100%, then you and Jesus have some talking to do about that. But even more than that, above and beyond that, Jesus, send laborers into the harvest field. Can we, let's just bow our heads right now. Can I have some folks get ready to serve the communion? I would appreciate it. Everybody else, I just want you to get alone with Jesus for a minute. Just close your eyes. Open your spiritual ears. first thing I want you to ask him is, Lord, is there anything, what's my assignment? Just ask him that. What's my assignment? What is it that you want me to do? I can see that the harvest is ready, it's ripe, and it's all around us. Men, women, and children, 
that you love, Jesus. They're all around us. They're confused and they're lost. They're like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus, they need you. So what's my assignment? Here I am. What's my assignment? I want I won't let <laughs> I won't let my insecurity keep me from doing what you want me to do. I won't let my worry about, well, am I mature enough in Christ or do I have everything figured out? That's not going to stand in my way. Jesus, I will do what you tell me to do. What's my assignment, Lord? The second thing that I want you to is just ask him, Jesus, will you send laborers into the harvest field? I'm just going to pray, and you can just agree with me. Jesus, this is your field, and this is your harvest. You, it is your desire for these souls. So this is your problem. And Lord, I am on your team, so I care about this very much, but I don't have any ability to change it. But by your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, you can call men and women to this region. You can call men and women in this region, and you can set them loose as laborers in this harvest field. So Jesus, I am asking you, I am asking you today, together with all my friends in this room, I am asking you to send laborers into the harvest field of Stabenn County. I'm asking you, King Jesus, to send laborers to northeast Indiana and southern Michigan. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to send laborers into Ohio. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to send laborers who are carrying your heart, your passion, your desire, and holy power into the, into the harvest field so that the harvest might be great and to the glory of your name and so that we don't have to see men and women and children who are lost and confused and broken so that they would no longer be with, like sheep without a shepherd, that they would find you, that they would find your love for them, that they would find your forgiveness, your hope, your joy, that they would find the purpose that you give. Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, send laborers into the harvest field. And specifically, Lord, I am asking you to send fired up passionate laborers to Fremont Community Church. People that don't that aren't here right now, I call them in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I call them in. Come in and get to work in this harvest field. Jesus wants a harvest, and he wants to bring it into this barn. And Lord, we say yes. Lord, send laborers to Fremont Community Church. We ask you for people who carry your heart for the children of this region. We ask you for people who carry your heart for the young people of this region. We ask you for people who carry your heart for the adults and, and, uh, of this region in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you'd fill them with passion, fill them with faith, and send them to this church so that we can labor together for the glory of your name and for the great harvest that you want to bring. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Do you agree? Amen. We're going to prepare to, we're going to go ahead and take communion. You guys want to go ahead and pass out the elements for me? We practice open communion at Fremont Community Church, which means if you love Jesus, or if you'd like to love Jesus, you can take communion with us. You are welcome to take communion with us this morning. Because this is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. And it is made ready for those who love him and for those who love him, want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, come. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long, come. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come. For the Lord invites you. And it is his will that those who would meet him would meet him here.
We receive communion every week at Fremont Community Church because we believe that the Lord has commanded us to gather around his table together, to remember his death until he comes, to partake of his flesh and his blood so that we might have a part in him as he is commanded. First Corinthians chapter 11, 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take it together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us receive it together. Let's stand. I'm going to ask you for a favor. It's a simple thing. But I'm going to ask everyone in this room, will you promise to pray for laborers to come to this harvest field? Will you pray that with me this week? I'm asking you to pray it every day, at least once a day, that you would pray that Jesus would send laborers into this harvest field. I believe that God answers prayer. Amen? Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you all. Thanks for coming.